Welcome to Applied Witnesses. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to revisit the life and ministry of Evan Roberts. You know, I believe that we're on the verge of the greatest revival in the church history, and I also believe that the Welsh revival was a forerunner and gave us a good example of what we're about to see on the earth. Therefore, I believe that if we look at Evan Roberts, a man who played a critical role in birthing that revival, we can learn how we can play a role in seeing a revival birth globally on the earth. I, I know there are many revivals occurring here and there throughout the world, but I believe that God's about to move globally and that he's calling his church to stand up and be a voice in this hour. As I look at Evan Roberts, and this episode, I'm not as looking as much on the historical as what we can learn from him, what he did right, what he did wrong. Because I believe as we study him, not with a judgmental spirit, but by the Holy Spirit gaining insight, it will help us because we need to learn how to weaken our weaknesses and strengthen our strengths and realize that the areas that we do not address can become areas that, in as we step into the purpose of God, they become the areas the enemy goes after and attacks. Remember Jesus said in that last Passover, uh, where he's talking to his disciples in John, uh, the enemy is coming, but he has nothing in me. We need to come to that place where when the enemy comes, he has nothing in us. And so as we look at Evan Roberts, my heart is, is to, again, give you insight into the things he did right, so that we can learn from them the things that are wrong so that we can avoid those mistakes and be catapulted into our divine purpose. So as I look at Evan Roberts, of course, he was born in 1878. He died in 1951, so he lived to be a good age. But when we look at his life, we really only think about a short time period, 1904, 1905, where he really made an impact. And, you know, I think about, you know, uh, certain people being one-hit wonders. They, they maybe they just produced one song, but it changed their generation. And to that extent, Evan Roberts changed he changed the world. He changed the church. And out of the Welsh revival, other revivals came. Uh, for example, the Azusa Street Revival. Evan Roberts saw many ministries birthed out of the Welsh revival. So the children of the revival went on, for example, the Jeffrey brothers. So there were people that came out from the Welsh revival that would take revival globally uh, throughout Britain and throughout the world, as I said. So Evan Roberts, we think of for that short time period, and it's sad because I believe there was so much more he could have done. And when we look at his life, when he, of course, went into seclusion in 1905, um, he came back out of seclusion during various periods in time. And when he came out of seclusion, we would see revivals begin to break forth. So had he stayed true to the mandate and call, that revival and that he birthed in Wales, I believe, would have gone further. Evan Roberts even said it, that he believed that the revival he was birthing wasn't just going to be uh, constrained to Wales, but it would invade England, and he believed it was going to be another great awakening. So he starts off with this vision for 100,000 souls in Wales, but it's a bigger vision that he wants to impact Britain, he wants to impact the world. When we see him fall into deception, he lose sight of that vision. And that's where I'm going to lay hold of some of the critical issues in his life so that we can understand how did he lose sight of the vision and get derailed. So let's start by looking at the status quo in Wales at the time when Evan Roberts uh, stepped up to the plate. In 
It is a time and a season where the church was backslidden. It's a time and a season where the church leaders discern we need the Holy Spirit to move. You know, if the church is content to live without revival, it will not have revival. So there has to come a disturbance in the church, in the leadership, that causes them to begin to pray and seek God and say, God, you've got to change uh, the church. You've got to pour out your spirit again upon the church. And they also got to recognize that we, the church, need to repent. We need to return to you, Lord God. And you see that in the early uh, the turn of the 20th century, church leaders in Wales begin to rise up and say, we need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Keswick Convention, of course, was occurring and played a major role in the birthing of this revival. Um, they had people that were beginning to cry out and seek God for this higher power. They believed in a holiness message, and Evan Roberts was part of that. Evan Roberts' family, his mother and his father, were both strong believers, and this played a major role role in the development of Evan Roberts. He was fed the word from an early age. His mother loved to worship. She loved to sing. And that built into Evan Roberts this great desire um, to, number one, he loved the word and he wanted to be a, a, well, I shouldn't say he didn't start out this way. He resisted the call for a season. But when he stepped into the call, he wanted to be an evangelist traveling throughout Wales, supporting himself and preaching the gospel. In many ways, like Wesley, and it's interesting that some newspaper articles refer to what was going on to be like the days of Wesley. I believe it's important that we train our children in the way that they should go. I love when you look at that verse, it actually translates, train your children according to their purpose, their call. And so in many ways, we look at Evan Roberts, he's been paired and been trained according to the call. His parents wanted him to go into ministry, and he was very resistant for a while, uh, but that call inside of him kept growing and kept calling him. And we look at his early life, he's separated. And the call will separate you. Uh, if you are called into ministry, you will probably notice that your life, you were different. You've been different. Why? Because the call begins to separate you from other people, uh, from doing the things of the world. And so Evan Roberts, even from an early age, acts different. Um, he does not, when he, when he, at the age of 12, goes into the mines to help his father who's been injured and of course, they need money coming. They're not a rich family, they're a poor family. The miners, who of course were very coarse and, and swore and stuff like that, recognized the difference with Evan Roberts and would not swear around him, acted differently around him. And Evan Roberts, based on because he, there was a call in him, begins a Bible study for the other children that are working in the mines. And if they don't have a prayer during that uh, time period, he would give them, he'd write them out a prayer and give it to them. Why? Because the call in him is stirring something on the inside of him, and it's separating him. And at the same time, he's starting to do things according to the call. I think had he realized that he was called to be a leader, that is something that Evan Roberts resisted. 
He didn't want to be the focal point, which is a good thing. However, moves of God need leadership. And when God calls somebody, puts them into a leadership role, we need to understand how to walk humbly in that leadership role so that we lift up Jesus, that we obey the Holy Spirit, and we're building His kingdom, not our own. We look at, again, just giving a, a, what was going on in that time period. Many people were looking at certain ministers that they looked and put on a pedestal as being the ones that would birth the revival. Seth Joshua, a man born in 1859 during the last Great Awakening in Britain, praised God raised somebody up from the uh, mines or the fields. And it was a prophetic prayer because that's exactly what God did. God raised up a nobody because God is not interested in men that are building their own kingdoms. You know, we're looking at this hour, and a lot of times we look for the big ministries, that God's going to use the big ministries. I believe there's a lot of nameless people that God is beginning to work on that He will raise up and use mightily in the last move of God, in this next great move, um, that... Right now that we saw them, we met them, we would consider them insignificant nobodies because God looks at the heart, not on the outward. You know, he's not looking for somebody that has all the stuff in place to birth revival. He's looking for, all the, for the person that has the right things in their heart to birth revival. See, God wants to do it by his spirit because if we can do it by our own ability, we will. And we've got to come to a place not by our might, not by our power, but by the Holy Spirit. A revival is not something that man can manufacture. It is something that has to be prayed down from heaven. It is a solemn move of God. It is based on the timing of God. It's based on the purpose of God. And it is based on the Holy Spirit having freedom to move and do what he sees fit. So we look at Evan Roberts. And even from this early age, God has begun to build certain characteristic traits in him that are going to be necessary. He learned very quickly to be faithful. He understood the importance of being faithful. He turned up to every church service because he wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he didn't want to miss that service where the Spirit of God would turn up. So he has this, inside of him this desire to be seen as faithful, not to men. And I think this is an important thing, that... Is, are we trying to be faithful to men? Are we trying to be faithful to God? Because many people want their church attendance to be seen because of men. We have got to be faithful before the Lord. So Evan Roberts would look and he'd see all these kids playing and doing all these fun things, but he realized he couldn't do that. He had to separate himself and do and be faithful. And as I said, those sacrifices at the time were very difficult, you know, we look at him, well, it was not terrible. But as a young boy having to walk away from being able to play and do all these fun things, and, and he has to pray and seek and do the things of God, it was a big sacrifice, but it was a call to obedience too. And that is something that Evan Roberts built in himself. He, he learned to be obedient. I find it interesting, so when he goes into the mine to help his father, uh, who was injured, I was like six months, he helps his father out. There is an explosion in the mine that actually kills several miners. Evan Roberts always carried his Bible with him. He loved the Bible. He read that word continuously.
And he talks about, he wrote to a new believer once, he said, you know, um, that he wanted them to be dedicated to the Lord, that to love the Lord God, to be dedicated to the Word, to be committed to prayer, things that he held of great value in his life. So Evan Roberts took this Bible with him everywhere he went. And that day when the explosion occurred, that Bible actually saved the life of Evan Roberts. They were not able to go down into the mine for, I think, four or five days. When they finally did go down, Evan Roberts went looking for his Bible. And he said something that I think was profound, was that he had to get down on his knees to find the truth. His Bible had been scattered all over the floor uh, and been badly damaged. And he had to get down on the ground, on the floor, to pick it all up and put it together. We need to understand that you've got to get down on your knees to learn the truth. You've got to come to a place of submission to the Word. The Word must become final authority in your life. We live in an hour where everything's relative. We, we believe in a moral um, opinion that's based on what society declares as correct in this hour. That's not how Jesus thinks. The Word is forever settled in heaven, and God doesn't change the way He thinks. He doesn't change the way He acts. And he doesn't change his standards. And so he's consistent from generation to generation. And the standard is the word. And the word must become final authority. You must be consumed by the word until the word consumes you. And Evan Roberts was consumed by the word. He built his life on the word. He sought to live and do the word. Remember the call is to hear and do the word. And Evan Roberts sought to do that. So, after that, in his early teens, Evan Roberts, we see as a young man, he would often spend up all night just thinking about revivals. There had been great revivals in Wales. It was famous for revivals. And he loved to study revival. Something on the inside of him was drawing him to revival. And the fact that you're drawn to this um, documentary, I believe, is because of the call in you. And that maybe God is birthing in you a vision for revival. And so as you feed on revival, it helps to build that call. It helps to stir the thing on the inside of you. You need to go into the Word and build a foundation in the Word that edifies and solidifies the call and purpose of God. Feed on revivals. The telling and the retelling of revivals, according to Edwin Ward, helps to birth another revival. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. As you hear what God did in a previous generation, you come to revelation as you look at the Word and you see what He's done, that God can do what He did before again in this generation. It looked just as bleak in 1904 as it does today. It looked like the church was all over. It, the church was very loud of city and it was backslidden. It was corrupt. It wasn't preaching the gospel. It lacked power. The same today. And it was changed by people that went after God and stepped up to the plate and served their generation. Whether that was just stepping up as a leader to pray in, to uh, recognize that we need change, or like Evan Roberts, to be the one to pray in, birth, and lead, a, the, lead the revival. So Evan Roberts um, comes to a place where he realizes, you know what, I am going to go into ministry. And he begins to prepare for that. So he decides that he's going to go work for his uncle. His mother's family were blacksmiths. Uh, his father's side were miners. So he decides to go work for his uncle as a blacksmith. So he can... he's saving up money to fulfill the purpose of God. You see where his heart is. You see the desire of his heart. How many of us, when we look at our money, because where your money is, there is your heart also. His heart was in fulfilling the purpose of God. How many of us are trying to build our thing 
Uh, we're trying to save money for certain things, but are we trying to save money and put money up to fulfill the purpose that God has for us? So you're starting to get an understanding of Evan Roberts' heart. When he goes to be a blacksmith, um, one of the things that starts to happen is he works very long hours. Evan Roberts was a person that was committed to giving time to the Lord every day. He practiced the presence. He would spend time in fellowship with the Lord God. It was very important to him, even at an early age. In fact, uh, when he went to Bible school, one of his big concerns in going to Bible school was losing this fellowship time with the Lord. You need to protect. And that was one of the things Evan Roberts did right. He protected in the good days that fellowship time with the Lord. You've got to protect your relationship. You've got to protect your marriage. You've got to protect your relationship with the Lord. That has got to be important because a relationship is built by spending time together in communication. And so Evan Roberts understood he needed to have fellowship time, uh, that he was the branch, the Lord is the vine, and he needs to pull that life daily from the vine. And so he's got to protect that relationship time. So when he goes to Bible school, he makes a commitment that he's going to keep 30 minutes every day spending time fellowshipping with the Lord. Now, somewhere along this time period, he has an experience, an encounter where the Lord turns up um, he was going to bed, he, he would go to bed, he would pray, and one night he's going to bed, he's praying, and the Lord appeared. And he has this encounter where he said he has fellowship with the Lord for five hours, an event that occurs and continues for quite some period of time, for several months. And he has an encounter with Father God, and he begins to discover his purpose and call, and he has this fellowship time with the Lord. I believe we each have got to come to that place where we have fellowship time. Maybe we don't have something where we see the open heaven, we see something physically, um, but we need to have fellowship time with the Lord where it is intimate, where we do open up every part of our life and say, God, I give you access so that you can bring forth correction, you can bring forth edification so that I can step into the purpose. I believe that many of the heroes of faith they step and they, they birth their call because of that holy desperation through that fellowship time with the Father. And that is the foundation of which the ministry is built. But later on, that's the area that they neglect and leads them into the errors that they would go in, those that went into error. So you need to protect that what's important, and Evan Roberts did. So Evan Roberts, um, as I said, was separated. He was sold out, as you see, because he is willing to um, dedicate everything he's doing into fulfilling the purpose of God. And inside of him, there is a vision for revival. He has a vision in his head that he's going to see revival in Wales. He commits himself and dedicates himself to prayer because of that. See, you've got to get a vision from heaven that causes a holy disturbance in you. Evan Roberts wrote regarding the church that he saw it as failed.
It disturbed him. What he saw going on in the church disturbed him. He realized change had to come. Are you disturbed by what you see? When you look around, do you see the church preaching the gospel? No. Does it disturb you? Are you pressing in and giving heaven no silence until heaven moves? <clears throat> I look at, I believe in Zechariah chapter 1, where we see this incredible event where God sends these beings to patrol the earth. And they come back and God says, what's the report? And they say, all is quiet. And God is disturbed. Why is it disturbed? You know, you think that everything being quiet on the earth would be a good thing. No, it was the time and the season for God to restore Jerusalem, to restore his people, and the people were quiet. We need to recognize the time and recognize what's going on and refuse to give heaven a peace until heaven does what it says it will do. God is looking for those that recognize the time and the season that we live in to step up to the plate and give heaven the rest. Say, God, we will not be quiet. We will not stop. We'll keep praying. We'll keep pressing and we'll keep declaring. We'll hold you to your promises because this generation needs to see a God of power. They need to see Jesus, a real Jesus. And we're praying, Father God, until you move, until your spirit of God moves on the earth, that you pour out your spirit once again on the earth. Too many are preaching this uh, milk gospel, this watered-down gospel that teaches people about Jesus just enough so they think that they're saved, but they never, ever truly get saved. They never come to know Jesus. They know about Him, but they never know Him. And we need to get a place that we are disturbed that, no, I will not let this generation go to hell. Evan Roberts was asked when he went to the Bible school, why do you want to come into Bible school. And he explained that it was the burden to preach the gospel because he had a burden for souls. He wanted to see souls one for Jesus. If you spend time fellowshipping with Father, you are going to start to get a hold of what is the burden on his heart. Now, if you spend time with somebody, you start to grow like them. You start to understand what they think and what they like. And you know, in a marriage, you, you, you want to please your spouse. You want to catch hold of what pleases them, what they are focused on, what their heart desires. And if we spend time with Father God in fellowship, we should be getting hold of what's on his heart, which is always souls for Jesus. He is disturbed because he wants to see Jesus lifted up. He sent Jesus that no man should perish. And his desire is that the church would step up to the plate and be a voice in this hour. And so... Evan Roberts was disturbed. He had a burden for souls, and that is always the driving force in a revival, is the burden to see souls won. It was interesting, as a younger boy, he was asked, he was talking to his parents, he said, woe would be if I do not preach this gospel. You know, woe is you if you don't fulfill the purpose. Is there something on the inside of you that is driving you? I've got to fulfill the purpose. I've got to step out and do. And Evan Roberts, um, as he goes to Bible school, he has this experience and something begins to burn on the inside of him. You know, you become restless because you start to discern that there's a new season coming uh, for your call and for your purpose. And I believe that Evan Roberts somehow was discerning there was a changing of the seasons coming. And he was about to be launched into his divine purpose. He comes to a place where he recognizes that um, God is about to move. And he goes to a meeting where Seth Joshua is there. And Seth Joshua has been praying 
for a person to be raised up from the mines or the fields. Evan Roberts has been praying for about 10 years for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The two come together in this meeting and the Spirit of God turned up and both got their prayers answered that day. Evan Roberts has an encounter where the Spirit of God fills him. And he is so impacted by the Spirit of God, he's got to cry out, here's the words, bend me. And as he hears those words, bend me, they take root. The Spirit of God speaks to him. And he starts to cry out, bend me for the love of God commands us. He suddenly gets a hold of the love of God and he becomes consumed by the love of God. The love of God has got to be the driving force in your life and ministry. You've got to be controlled by the love of God. You've got to be grounded and rooted by the love of God. And Evan Roberts lays hold of it. All of a sudden, that love of God consumes him. And he cries out, bend me. We've got to come to a place where God, we recognize the wretch that we are, that we need to be changed. We need to bend. We need to break and surrender and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We've got to stop looking to our traditions, our opinions, and say, God, what do you desire? I may not understand, it may not fit uh, into my ideas, it may not fit into my agenda. I may have worked it all out in paper, but you come along and you just trash it all and you're going to do this. I will do it because the love of God controls me. I'm seeing things from the perspective of heaven. And so Evan Roberts is now a different person. He steps up and goes to his lecture and explains, I've got to go home. I'm going to birth a revival. And he's telling his friends, and his friends are like, this is crazy, because why? He's at Bible school. The purpose of Bible school is to equip you, to train you so that you can go into ministry. So hold on a minute. You're saying the Spirit of God is telling you to step out now and go preach, and you're going to birth a revival? No, no, it doesn't make sense. It didn't make logical sense according to the natural order. Why wouldn't God have him to continue, uh, be trained, be prepared, so they can go out and be licensed, ordained. But you're saying the Spirit of God is telling you to go. They actually had him go to see a doctor and make sure he wasn't mentally insane. This is something that would plague Evan Roberts. But at this point, he understands because he's controlled by the Spirit of God. And he's not moved by what they say. He is moved by what heaven says. And he determines, I've got to obey. Because when the Spirit of God turns up, there's a divine go. When you spend time with the Holy Spirit, you're going to find there's a divine go. What He's put in you gets stirred up. What's in you gets stirred up. And I'm going to just touch on this for a minute because Evan Roberts later on would fall um, where he would, in, in 1905, he would start to experience emotional breakdowns. He would, he would have mental issues. And um, partly because, number one, he stopped sleeping. We look back at his early days, and this was something that Evan Roberts did a lot. He would go all night without sleeping. And so this is an area that was a flaw because you've got to be a good steward of your body. You've got to make sure it gets good nutrition. It gets rest. Your body needs rest.
And Evan Roberts was used to ignoring rest, ignoring food. And the problem was when it came and the pressure's on, and he's an agenda where he's working 17 to 20 hours a day, he's not getting proper nutrition, he's not sleeping, it started to wear him down and it impacts your mind. Remember the Bible says that you've not been given a spirit of fear, but power, love, and soundness of mind. And when we stay with the things of the spirit, we stay with a sound mind. And so we discover that Evan Roberts, uh, because he's not following and, 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 and staying faithful to being a steward of his body, giving it rest, he starts to have mental breakdowns. And he would end up being led astray because of that and going to this place of restoration. That restoration was not this place where the Spirit of God takes you and stirs you. A proper place of restoration where you're with the Spirit of God. The gift becomes more on fire on the inside of you. The purpose of God gets bigger on the inside of you. You get more excited. <clears throat> and another thing is you look both in the testimonies uh, of people that wrote regarding the, the Welsh Revival and regarding Evan Roberts and the newspapers. Evan Roberts was at this early stage a man of great joy and great peace. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you are going to endure what the enemy is going to throw at you, you need great joy. You need great peace. Uh, the peace enables you to hear the voice of the Father in the difficult times because you're going to need wisdom. How do I handle this? How do I deal with this situation? When people attack you, and, and Evan Roberts would be attacked, he would be persecuted, he'd be criticized. How do you handle that? Well, when you stay in peace, you can hear from heaven, and it prevents you receiving that criticism in the inside of you where it can do damage. You've got to guard your heart, because out of your heart flows the issues of life. And the enemy is after the heart, and he's going to attack the heart and the area of emotions and the area of hurts. And so Evan Roberts, in this early stage, he's got a great peace and a joy. He's got an obedience to the Lord God over obedience to men. So here he is in a situation where he's going to go home and he's got to make a stand. Everybody around him says, you're wrong. Somehow when God tells you to do something, he forgets to tell those around you. Even when Evan Roberts went home, his family thought he was foolish. They weren't in agreement with him. He's just quit school to birth a what? You don't just birth revivals. They hadn't seen revival, and as far as they know, revival wasn't coming. It didn't look like it. And number one, or number two, is that they look at Evan Roberts, and we know you. See, people look at you according to the flesh. Jesus, you are you not the son of Mary and Joseph? They didn't see when Jesus turned and said, this is the day where this word is fulfilled. The Spirit of the Lord beat upon me, that I am the Messiah. They couldn't see that because why they looked according to the natural. And people look according to the natural. And unless they're in tune with the Spirit and hear the Spirit, they're not going to hear what He's saying to you. And they're going to judge you by the physical. We're to judge by the fruit. And I'm glad that the lecturer, the leaders, um, made a wise decision and said, Go. And when Evan Roberts comes home, he goes to his local church and says, Can I share? And they agreed to let him share. Again, they thought he was crazy too. They agreed to let him share after service. He, he gets an opportunity to share with the teens. And he shares his story. And as he shares his story, you start to see the burden on his heart, which is souls. And he refuses to let them go until they all receive Jesus. Evan Roberts is driven by this message. Number one, you've got to confess Jesus as Lord publicly. You've got to renounce anything that is questionable in your life. You've got to get rid of it out of your life. You've got to learn to obey the Holy Spirit. Um, and a lot of this stuff was, in many ways, at that time, revolutionary. People didn't think that way. You didn't get up and publicly confess Jesus. You know, we think of it today, but in that time, in that hour, that was, that was revolutionary. But that's what the Spirit of God had told him. And he begins to tell him, you got to, I need you guys to receive Jesus and declare that he's your Lord. And his family, his brothers and, his brother and sister there, 
and he does not stop until he knows they've all got it. Evan Roberts was a man at this stage who was persevered. He was driven, he was committed, and he didn't quit. We see that as we start to see some meetings occur, revival starting to begin. Then there's a meeting he holds during a weekday, which is a work day, of course, and uh, at, at midnight, his mother said, it's time to go. Look, people haven't turned up. It's time to go, Evan. And he's like, no. And his mother starts to explain the, the natural order. Look, people are working in the morning. No one's come. It's all over. You've had a prayer attendance. You know, you gave it your best shot, but it's all over. Look, there's hardly anybody here. It's a work day. Nobody's coming. Let's go home. Let's go to bed. But that wasn't Evan Roberts. He didn't just say, oh, I quit. Evan Roberts didn't understand at this time in his life the word quit. And so he gives his mother a little bit of a rebuke and saying, are you leaving? Um, and he continues to pray. And he prays all night because that's Evan Roberts. Because he's locked in. And as he said to his mother, the Holy Spirit is closer now than he's ever been. He's recognizing the Spirit. The Spirit of God is beginning to move. Don't quit. So many of us quit just about the time when the Spirit is going to move. And we should begin to discern there's a stirring in the Spirit. And the Spirit saying, stay faithful, keep pressing in, keep pressing in, it's about to break, come on, come on, come on. And the cloud of witnesses are calling to us, come on, you're about to see the breakthrough, don't quit. But I'm tired, I need a break, I've been praying for an hour, so I'm just, I've been praying for a good five minutes, it's too much. We've got to pray longer, we've got to be persevering in prayer, and Evan Roberts persevered and didn't quit, and finally in the very late hours, or very early hours of the morning, he finally went to bed. And it looked from a natural perspective that all had failed, but somehow there came a point where Reverend Roberts knew the breakthrough had come. That's the time to quit praying. You may not see in the natural the breakthrough, but in your spirit, man, you know. You know that you know that you know. And Reverend Roberts knew. So when he wakes up out of bed, he goes and he reads a newspaper article. And the Keswick Convention announced about this great revival that was occurring in Locker, where Evan Roberts was from. That night, the churches filled, and they never stopped filling after that. Evan Roberts' life changed from that day forward. This man, who was a very nervous disposition, a man who hated the spotlight, but there was something on the inside of him drawing him to the spotlight. He just couldn't understand how to do it. But there's a lot he starts to do right. And one of the things he will do is he calls his obedience to the Holy Spirit. He wanted people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in his revival meetings, he let the Holy Spirit have control. We're so used to our services being uh, based on how we always do it. We have our five worship songs, our offering, and then we preach for 30 minutes or whatever it may be. That's not how Evan Roberts did it. You never knew he was going to preach. Evan Roberts likes the spontaneity of the Holy Spirit. And the papers even talked about this organized disorganization. that they couldn't understand that people would all at the same time birth forth and worship, some in English, some in Welsh, the same song, even though it was never announced. Evan Roberts also understood, I want to lay, pull this something here, he surrounded himself with the right people. He had a group of people. You need to be surrounded with a group of people that are the same flow as you, the same spiritual flow. 
Because if you are, they will sharpen you, they will enable you, they will empower you, they will be standing with you. They understand the direction in which you are going. They understand the heartbeat of your call and of your purpose. And so Evan Roberts had these singers and other people like his uh, brother-in-law that surrounded him that were of the same call, the same mind, the same spirit. And that's important because like sharp as like, you need to be uh, with people that can feed into your life, that we are submitted one to another, that have an input, as I said, that can give you a timely word to encourage you, correct you, etc. So Evan Roberts goes forth with this group of people that he has surrounded himself with. He has agreed that he's going to pay for them to travel with him. He's going to do this by faith. I love the fact that Evan Roberts was greatly influenced by uh, George Mueller. George Mueller, who was an impactor, a man that sowed seed, um, taught many people to stand on specific promises in the Word and pray them in. And that's what Evan Roberts did. And he stood on specific promises based on what George Mueller. And understanding George Mueller regarding believing God in the area of finances. And, and Evan Roberts stepped out trusting God in the area of finances. He took his original money and helped give it. And he was a giver. And I want to make that point. Evan Roberts was a man who gave. He was not about him. He wasn't concerned with the finances. He was a person that always sought to give beyond. And I want to say this. You can never give more than God. But it's a good thing to be a giving person because when you're a giving person, you open yourself up to receive from heaven. And when Evan Roberts remained giving, God poured in and God blesses because God wants to bless others through you. And you get blessed as you bless. You know, as I told Abraham, you are blessed to be a blessing. So Evan Roberts, this revival means begin to happen. That changed the nation very quickly. Revival, in my opinion, it's a divine assault on society. It changed the nation of Wales. We see crime immediately dropped. We see people in the pubs being convicted, coming out of curiosity and, and getting saved at the meetings. At these meetings that were different, Evan Roberts would walk up and down the aisles. He didn't get up on the... the um, platform and preach from the uh, the altar or the pulpit, he would be a person that walked up and down the aisles. He got to where the people were, and you never knew if he was going to stop and speak a word over you, pray, get down to his knees and pray and seek God for you, because he was burdened. Your burden was real to him. What you were going through was as if he was going through. I want you to lay hold of that. Because if you were going to be effective in ministry, 
you've got to see it personal. What they're going through is personal to you. That you will pay the price for their breakthrough. You will lay down your life for them that they would see the breakthrough. You will not quit as if it was you and you needed that breakthrough. You will not quit. You will not stop until heaven moves for this person. And you see this in Evan Roberts. And there was spontaneity of worship. You never knew when he would get up and preach, whether he would say a couple words, a lot of words, or nothing. There were many meetings where he did nothing, and he didn't want the eyes or focus on him. And while that was really good in one perspective, it was bad in another. There were times he needed to step up and be the leader. And Evan Roberts didn't want that. He had a heart where, yes, I want to magnify Jesus, which was good. But you got to realize the gift in you. When people receive the gift in you, they receive Jesus, the gift, and the giver, the gift, the Father. And we have got to be unashamed of the gift and be willing to stand up in true humility based on the kingdom rules, which is the higher up you go, the lower down you are, the more the servant you are. And Evan Roberts need to understand that, that, you know, the higher up you go, the more the servant. But he didn't need to be walked over. And so Evan Robert, one of the things he didn't understand was the discipline of learning to say no. One of the greatest things you can learn is to say no. Say no first, because it's easy to take a no and make it a yes. But it's very difficult which is what we always want to be the nice person, so we always want to say yes. But then we can't fulfill it, and we have to say no. And it causes more damage than good. If you start off by saying no, and you turn it to a yes, people get excited. It's a good thing. That's a good experience. Evan Roberts liked to say yes, and then he would fail. And so he felt committed all the time to turn up to all these meetings and it began to wear the man out because he's not resting, he's not feeding, he's constantly on the go. And yes, it's changing the nation. Yes, Christmas 1904 uh, was the best Christmas that Wells ever saw. Families restored. See, revival, as I said, is a divine assault. It changes everything. Family dynamics change. Instead of there being strife in a home, Marriages are being reunited, and there's a change in focus. It's not about me. It's not about going to the pub and spending money on me. It's about now taking that money and putting it into others. And so they began to take care of one another. Families are being brought together and strengthened. Uh, the crime rate dropped. Everywhere you went, all people, they were talking about this man, Evan Roberts, and the power on him. People recognized there was a power on him. There was something about him that made him different. It wasn't Evan Roberts. Listen, it's not you. There's nothing you bring to the table. It's the Holy Spirit on you, through you, that causes the change. You've just got to be obedient and get out of the way and let the Spirit of God use this vessel. Don't build your kingdom. Let God build His. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, not your agenda. And so Evan Roberts, very quickly, as he steps up to the plate, I believe the enemy declared him um, his enemy number one and went after Evan Roberts with everything he could. Early on, Evan Roberts recognized the plans of the enemy. He said, the enemy's out to, to derail me, to stop me. And Evan Roberts... Um, refused to be derailed by the plans of the enemy. Because remember, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He will try to do everything. He tried to kill Evan Roberts. He tried to steal from him. He tried to stop the call. The enemy will always try to cause you to abort the call before it's birthed. But Evan Roberts was a man committed. Let me go back a bit. In that preseason of Evan Roberts, he was so committed. He prayed loud. He prayed boldly. In his apartment, his flat, he was kicked out by his landlord because all she could do is hear this man praying out loud 
boldly that it scared her. She thought it, something was wrong and she kicked him out. How many people uh, have you been kicked out of places because you pray too loud? You're too much of a prayer. That was Evan Roberts. He walked down the street and he would go into a trance and just begin to talk to the Lord. He was more distracted by heaven than the things on the earth. And he didn't mind being a fool for Christ's sake. He didn't mind that in the middle of somewhere public, he just get caught up with the Lord and gone. His mind was on the Lord. And he didn't care if you thought, what's wrong with that guy? It didn't matter because it was all about him and the Lord. And if you are going to birth revival, the Lord has got to become greater to you than your natural circumstances and the words of other people. God has got to be the greatest voice in your life and be the his presence has got to take preeminence in your life. You desire the presence. Evan Roberts in his dorm, um, after they would go to sleep, they would hear Evan Roberts and he'd be groaning and crying and praying all night. They said they didn't fully understand what was going on, but they were too frightened to ask him. Evan Roberts just birthing a groan, according to Romans 8. It was so deep by the Spirit of God, birthing a revival. He was consumed by this thing. As God was preparing him. But how he was prepared by prayer. How do you birth it by prayer? Now he stepped into the call and he's doing it. And guess what he doesn't get a lot of? That prayer time. Yes, he's getting public prayer time in front of people. But not the personal fellowship prayer time. Where he's spending time with daddy God to hear father's voice. And to be equipped. Now I talked about, you know, he's under a great deal of strain. That he did go and he would pray. And the spirit of God would just poured him like a bath, he always talked about, and he feels strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And as we see Evan Roberts go on, we start to see that joy begin to diminish and the peace begin to diminish as the stress, because why he's carrying it. And he began to flow prophetically. You see him, um, some newspapers talk about him being the seer because he could just read people's mail. He could just tell their situations and he would call them out and tell them what was going on in their life. But as he moves on, and as you step out of the anointing where, because now he's not spending the time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit like he was, he becomes grumpy. He becomes critical. Prophetic people that are not staying under the anointing are critical and mean. Those that are under the anointing can say things that you look at, oh, dear Lord, but it's a right word by the Spirit in love, and it does what it's supposed to do. During the um, spring of 1905, Evan Roberts gets attacked by a man called Price. 
He gets attacked by a lot of people, and I believe in part because he began to flow in Pentecostal things. Um, our newspaper articles will talk about they prayed in tongues, even though Evan Roberts publicly did not believe in it. Uh, we see later evidence that he did pray privately. He was flowing prophetically, as I said. He would go into trances. Many things that we associate with Pentecostalism, and I think that this criticism that started to come forth that people thought he was going crazy. The newspapers start talking about the revival being in jeopardy based on his sanity. He's getting attacked. And we start to see the weaknesses in this man. And we lived in that time period. Many of us, have we been moved by the newspapers, would have thought, oh, here's another one falling. We look at him in light of what the church has said, but not if we were to live in that time period. Many people became very disappointed and hurt by Evan Roberts. Why? Because he starts to fall. He cannot mentally hold it together. And even though he went to get checked out when he was in Liverpool and they found him fine, he can't get in his spirit, in his heart, that God's called you, God's equipped you. You just got to learn the discipline of walking by the Spirit of God and, and taking proper rest and just flowing with the Spirit. He feels the need. He feels the burden. He keeps going, 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 because sometimes we confuse doing with obedience. And even though he took a seven-day break where he refused to preach, I think he didn't understand how to flow fully with the Spirit. He understood the certain area very effectively in the, in the service, but in his personal walk, how to flow. And so in 1905, he starts to have these breakdowns. And that's a time period where Jezebel, in the name of a Penn Lewis, Miss Penn Lewis, turns up because Evan Roberts is at a critical point. The pressure of it all, the stress of it all is showing, and the newspapers talk about it. It's becoming too much for him. It's overwhelming him. And so Evan Roberts, the stress of it is getting in him. And when it gets in you, it comes out of you. And God wants life coming out of you. So you've got to guard this heart, as I said. Penn Lewis comes to the right point with the right word that I get you, Evan. I understand where you're at. And here, I'll take care of you. Because Evan Roberts, of course, didn't have money. And so she offers him a place to stay. That's what, that's what was big to Evan Roberts. You know, you got to realize if you're a traveling minister, that you don't have money coming in and things are going wrong, where are you going to get the finances to live? Where, where, where are you going to stay? What are you going to do? And so she takes him in, and she ultimately takes him off to Leicestershire. Um, and Evan Roberts then becomes secluded. He steps out. And it's supposed to be recorded, as I said earlier, for this period of restoration. But the spirit of religion never restores you. It puts you on the bench and says, we're here to restore you, but never does. Because it can't restore you.
But the Holy Spirit, when you're spending time with Him and He's restoring you, you know what the difference is? I said, your vision becomes more on fire, becomes more consuming. You get more excited about it. You get to see the different ways. I can do this and that. The Spirit of God is creative. It inspires. God, when He breathes in, He inspires you. And so that thing in the inside of you gets bigger. But when you're on the bench being restored by the spirit of religion, it gets small. You become more depressed, discouraged. Why? Because you're stepping out of the call. When Evan Roberts stepped out of the call, he starts to become depressed. He becomes discouraged. That's a good indicator that you're not being restored. That's a good indicator that you're in the wrong place. You need people of the right flow to help you when you need to be restored. People of the same spiritual flow that understand the gift, that receive the gift. Penn Lewis did not receive Evan Roberts' gift. Receiving it means respecting it, honoring it. It carries value to them. Penn Lewis came along and said, Evan Roberts, you got to learn from me. I'm going to teach you. That's the spirit of religion. you got to submit to me. I'm the one that's got the truth. i got to help and fix you. They never received what you did. They never recognized. She, in fact, would write and talk about that Evan Roberts opened the gates of hell and allowed devils forth, that the revival was demonic and she was against it. She also would come against Pentecostalism when it, tried to, when it was being birthed in Britain by Alex's body. She wrote to try and stop it. She was very against the move of the Spirit. And so she steps in. She's not receiving Evan Roberts. So that's one of the first things. If you're going to be restored, are you being received? Because if you receive, they recognize there's a value on the gift, on the calling. And if they receive it, now they can help you because what? They're there to enable you and empower you to get to where God wants you. It's not about their agenda, which is what was happening with Penn Lewis. She had her agenda, her plan, and she was going to use Evan Roberts to get her purpose. And so she's telling him he needs to be quiet for the season, for God has got a higher calling, something greater. He's going to be, he never would be restored. He never did step into this bigger thing. He never did accomplish something greater. We see Evan Roberts step back into public ministry here and there. She allowed him to write in her uh, newsletter, but finally, when he started gaining a lot of uh, the attention, she stopped it. She had him co-author the book, War of the Saints, which was uh, not a godly book and was condemned because it talked about believers being filled with the enemy, uh, not just being oppressed, but being possessed by the enemy. And she cuts off. Now, she said it wasn't her, and Evan Roberts said it was him. Cut off all. So nobody was getting input. Not his family. Now, I know the word says, I've come not to bring peace but a sword, and it can separate family. But it's not you separating from family. It's family separating from you. We need family. We should respect and honor family. Here, Evan Roberts cuts himself from all his friends, all his family, those that understood him the best. Those that could minister to him the best, he cuts off. And he surrounds himself with one lady who has her own agenda that she is there to teach him. She didn't birth the revival. She didn't change the nation. She didn't change the globe. Evan Roberts did. She didn't respect that, nor did she receive that. And you'll find that the right people receive you. And when they receive you, it's not to lift you and glorify you. It's to glorify Jesus in you. They receive Jesus in you. Your gift helps them. When I receive your gift, it helps me. And we're in it together to build His kingdom, not our own. He is the head. Not me, not you, not the pastor, not some religious leader. It is Jesus who's the head. So Evan Roberts 
allowed himself. The word says you are responsible not to be deceived. You are to judge things by the fruit. He should have judged by the fruit. Many people around him would tell him, don't do it. But he did it anyways. And then he cuts off. Why is he cut off all those voices? Because he didn't want to hear. He didn't want to hear that he could possibly be wrong. We've got to be open. You know what? You've got to be open in a place where you're open. A soft heart where you can hear. And Lord, if this, this is right, I want to hear. Am, am I missing it? And you have a soft heart seeking after God. Rather, what consumed Evan Roberts is, no, this is right. And there was no questioning. Because he's been taught, he's receiving and drinking the Kool-Aid. Evan Roberts allowed himself to be deceived, and he steps out of his mandate. You know, I cannot fully explain, but there's certain people that carry the mandate for that. When Evan Roberts stepped down and stepped away from the call, the revival began to decline and disappear. When Evan Roberts would step back up, which he did, for example, when he gave his, uh, his father's eulogy, revival started to occur. But Evan couldn't put the connection together that God called you to this nation. You've abandoned your assignment. Don't abandon. Don't allow the enemy to abort your call, to cause you to, to kill the purpose of heaven in you. And what happened was there were things in Evans Roberts' life as a teenager. He wanted to be a bard. He would love to sing. He wanted to write. And now he started to write. He started to write poems. He's not the same man that he was. The standard of holiness and separation that he held as a child, he's now stepping away from. We see a man now that smokes a pipe, goes to games. Other things that he said were wrong earlier on, he's now doing. He's not walking the sanctified life that he walked years ago, separated onto the call. He's separated from people. But remember the word, we are to go. You don't hide your light under a bushel. A city and a hill cannot be hidden. You are not called to go somewhere, lock yourself in a room so you become holy. You're called to go be in the world, but not of the world. To be a light in the world. How are they going to see Jesus? Through you. Going into the world and showing them that you are changed that you have a peace, you have a joy by the Holy Spirit, no matter what you throw at me, I am always overcoming because there's something in me called the Holy Spirit working because I received Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it's always a now relationship with Jesus. And I have a now faith, a now hope, now love. And Evan Roberts lost it. He's lost his joy, his peace, he's lost his hope. We see that in his later years. Now he would minister to people, he taught some people how to pray, he did write to people. He wrote to Frank Bartleman at Azusa Street. He helped in many ways birth the revival at Azusa Street. But he's not 
standing in the mandate that he was called to do. He's going to abandon his assignment. So, as he does that and he continues to walk away from it, he loses the vision for revival. Now, later on, um, he did return to Wales, but many of the Welsh people were offended, number one, because of the book he wrote, War on the Saints, but also he had abandoned Wales. They're very prideful people, nationalistic people. And here's a man that had been close to their heart, had really impacted the nation, blessed them, the people loved him, and he abandons them and goes to England. He betrayed them. And you see that in the newspapers where he has failed the people. But he comes back. He writes a letter to a minister that just got ordained. He writes them. He gets invited back and he preaches. And they start to see revival. But then he slips back. He's cut off his family. He comes back um, in the late 20s. He finally comes back to Wales. And he lived out the rest of his days in Wales. But he remains in seclusion. He's not the voice that it was, and he comes to a place, particularly after the war, where he can no longer see revival. The vision for revival is gone. What's changed? The only thing that really changed was Evan Roberts, because there was a spiritual decline. That is true. But there was a spiritual decline before the revival birthed. It was never about the natural. It was always about the Holy Spirit, but he's lost. So instead of being in the higher calling... He's now lost sight of the Spirit. He's no longer excited and on fire for God. He's no longer being driven by a purpose and, 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 and by obedience to the Holy Spirit. He's now what? Discouraged, defeated, so-called doing this higher purpose. That's the goal of the enemy. is always to derail you. And it will get you in the area of emotions. Evan Roberts was hurt by the attacks, no doubt. He did not surround himself with the right people to help him, but he surrounded himself with a woman that he thought got him. But she was all about her. You were to judge by the fruit. Not just one bit of fruit, but look at the big picture. Let the Holy Spirit show you the big picture. Step back and see it as it really is. Let the Holy Spirit bring forth a correction to you. Let the Holy Spirit bring forth a uh, rebuke. If necessary, so that we don't forfeit the purpose of God. It's sad, I believe, that Evan Roberts could have accomplished so much more. Many people that connected with him that time period all agreed he was on this quest to be something of a higher call, but it, it wasn't doing anything. We need godly leaders that can speak into our lives, bring a right word, and say, This is wrong based on the word. You're not going. You're not doing. Too many churches today are busy doing things, but they're not going. They're not going, and they're not encouraging people to go. They want to keep you because you're a number. They want to keep you because they need you to do things in the church, but we're supposed to equip you so that you go. The church, the purpose of the local church is to equip you so that you go and fulfill the purpose God has in you. You should be stirred up, getting more excited, we should be fellowshipping together and be more and more excited by the things of God. We live in a critical hour. And it's important that you don't abandon the purpose of heaven or allow the devil to come steal, kill, or destroy. Many heroes of faith started off great, like Evan Roberts, a great heart and great passion. And I believe that Evan Roberts loved the Lord, died loving the Lord. I believe he was a genuine good man. I believe he was a follower of, of quality Christian, but he allowed himself to be deceived by that spirit of religion that seeks to control and manipulate. It uses emotional abuse. It uses written and unwritten rules. If you do this, there's a penalty. And so over season, you succumb to this thing and there, because you don't want that punishment. You'll be cut off. 
I'm here to give you spiritual protection. There's a blessing. You need to obey me. Obey your leaders. Instead of people earning our trust as the scripture calls us to, and we obey those that have earned our trust, that we see Christ, then we follow them as they follow Christ. We follow Jesus in them. Evan Roberts was a voice in his generation. What he did impacted. I saw revivals break out, for example, close to Pittsburgh. As miners left Wales and went elsewhere, other ministries came forth from his work. But how much more could he have done for the gospel? Had he stayed with his assignment? Had he been willing to stand up and when all the people were persecuting him, stood boldly on the word and said, I am fulfilling the purpose of God. Just stay with your assignment. Learn how to deal with persecution so you don't let persecution get in you. Because when it gets in you, it takes your joy. Remember the parable of the sword. Persecution wants to get in you to take your heart, make it stony, so the word does not produce the fruit it's supposed to. The word should increase in you. Do not lose sight of continually being consumed by the word, consumed by prayer, fellowship time. Do you have fellowship prayer time? Don't lose sight. You've got to protect that. When, you know, I listen, I hear somebody preach a great message and it blesses me. Get it for yourself. Don't live in somebody else's revelation. Go into the Word and get that message for yourself. Go line upon line, scripture upon scripture. Build it and get it. And if it's a right word, receive it. If it's a wrong word, be able to say no. You can make the decision what you receive in your life. Evan Roberts could have said no to certain things and yes to other things. He received the wrong things. We've got to be careful what we receive in our life using discernment by praying, judging by the fruit. Well, she, had, she got a heart and a burden after the Lord. Listen, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to go and do things wrong, and that's okay. You can make mistakes. God is bigger than your mistakes. God is bigger than your stupidity. But you've got to stay hearing, listening, obedient. And when you make a mistake, be quick to repent and put it right. Have your heart set on Him. Seek after His kingdom, His righteousness, His per her purpose. Stay with the peace. When you lose the peace, get back. God, I've lost the peace. That peace, when you experience His true peace, that peace will be your guiding, for, guiding uh, uh, light. It will tell you. And when you step out of it, I'm missing it. Step back into it. Repent. Get back in the Word. Get back in prayer. Don't just once it's birthed, throw out your prayer life. Throw out your Word life. No, stay with it. I'm warning you, when you step into the call, Pressure starts to consume you. You've got to learn to deal with pressure. You've got to learn to stay focused on heaven when the pressure is greatest. You've got to stay a person committed to the word and that fellowship time despite the pressure. The financial pressure, the, the, the demand pressure, and everything else that will come on you, the criticism. You must receive the smile from heaven. That should be the thing that, if I see you smile, Father God, that's all that matters. I fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith, not people. Well, I pray you're blessed and I pray you're encouraged. And I pray that this revisited documentary Evan Roberts uh, shared some things that will help you, will enable you so you don't lose the vision, that you don't lose sight of certain things. 
and you surround yourself with the right people to enable you to go forward and fulfill the purpose of God. Well, be blessed, be encouraged in the glorious name of Jesus. Thank you.